Man finds underwater building, finds treasure inside. He couldn't believe what he saw when he got to the bottom of the structure. He saw chairs and tables and the weirdest decoration he had ever seen. He expected to see something like the lost city of Atlantis. But what he saw was very different from his expectations. But just as he was taking in the discovery that he had just made, he saw something sitting on a table that would change everything. David Levy lived in Israel. His father was in the Israel Navy, a branch of the Israel Defense Force. This meant that he was always near the ocean. Every once in a while, his father would take him to the naval base to see the ship he would deploy on. This gave David a fascination for the ocean. Specifically, man-made objects winding up in the ocean. At the age of 16, his parents agreed to pay for diving lessons. But they had no idea what it would lead David to find one day. David was ecstatic at the prospect of diving lessons. He trained hard and learned quickly. After months of lessons, his vision shifted again. Now he dreamed of getting his open water certificate which would allow him to dive unrestricted in the ocean. He knew he'd have to get better before he'd be qualified, but his dreams of finding treasure kept him going. And one day, he would find something that would make all of it worth it. After a year of practice, lessons, and hard training, David finally mustered up the courage to try for his qualification. He was nervous, but he knew it was his passion and it was the only way to go forward. But he had nothing to worry about. Soon he finished up the course, took off his scuba gear, and walked out of the school with his certification. David couldn't wait to get into the open ocean on his own for the very first time. He'd be able to explore and look for any wrecks or sunken treasure. His parents were a little concerned about letting their now 18-year-old son go diving on his own. But they knew he had the qualification and that he was a young adult. So they reluctantly let him do what he wanted to do. Not knowing what they had just set in motion. Even though David had dived many times before, he had never dived on his own. He always had instructors with him to make sure he was alright. But now, he would be completely on his own. He got ready that Saturday morning. He put on his wetsuit and borrowed a small boat from one of his friends. He launched the boat on the coast of his country and got a decent distance from the shoreline. David put on his tanks and scuba gear. He took a deep breath and counted to three before diving overboard into the ocean. The water was crystal clear at the top. But as he dove deeper, it started getting murkier. David felt his heart rate going higher as he kept diving. He knew that he was truly all on his own. So if something went wrong, no one would ever find him. After 15 minutes of diving, David started thinking of the diving school horror stories they told him. His fellow classmates told stories to try and get under his skin. He knew they were all untrue, but it didn't help when he was alone in the water. From man-hungry sharks to even aliens, he'd heard more than a few stories trying to get him scared. But he soldiered until he saw something that could very well have been alien. David saw the gloom of the water give way to something on the ocean floor. He saw windows that had somehow held against the pressure. It looks like some kind of building. He needed to investigate more. He swam closer to the structure. It was hard to see through the windows, so he had to look for a way in. He saw a bridge leading up to the surface. He knew it was his way in. He swam back to the surface and saw part of the structure jutting out of the water. He saw his way in. He climbed back through so that he was on the inside of the bridge. But there was something he didn't expect. To David's surprise, it was completely dry and sealed on the inside. He didn't actually need any of his equipment, but the true discovery came when he walked down into the main part of the building that sat on the ocean floor. He couldn't believe what he saw when he got to the bottom of the structure. He saw chairs and tables and the weirdest decoration he had ever seen. He expected to see something like the lost city of Atlantis. But what he saw was very different from his expectations. But just as he was taking in the discovery that he had just made, he saw something sitting on a table that would change everything. It was now clear what he was standing in. He saw something sitting on the table that explained it all, a menu. It had decently prized seafood and cocktails. The menu looked well preserved for how long the place must have been abandoned. He picked it up and examined it more closely. He smiled to himself. He had never heard of the restaurant before. And it was clear that it had closed down decades ago. David was satisfied with his find. Even if it wasn't an ancient structure, he still loved the adventure. Plus, he would be able to take a keepsake treasure back with him the menu. He could think of a spot where the menu would go perfectly in his house. It would be the first of many artifacts that he would look for in the ocean. He was keen to learn more about the place he was in, so he decided to head back to shore and make a few phone calls. David took some photos of the restaurant and left for his boat. Once he left, he headed for shore and started making a few phone calls. He needed to find out more about the place. He managed to find someone who used to actually eat at the restaurant. He called him, and they arranged to meet. They met each other at a cafe, and the man started telling him everything they needed to know. The restaurant was called the Red Sea Star Restaurant and was the first restaurant of its kind. 
It attracted a lot of attention when it opened, and patrons got to experience what it was like to drink cocktails on the ocean floor. It was a sad day when the place finally went out of business and became abandoned. Since then, all it has done is accumulate barnacles and slowly fade from most people's memories. At least David had his prize to remember his adventure.